And everything that they have done has always been a bit of a knee jerk. It became a lunge for money and it became a lunge for revenge. It became a lunge to create clickbait. There's no strategy about the long-term vision. It's really hard to look back on it now and go, what on earth happened? Look, they've been floundering for some time. Um, you know, there's a number of uh, challenges I've had to face that have made, you know, international news, you know, primarily the fact that their Netflix and their, uh, you know, and their Spotify contracts were renewed or there was some issue regarding the quality of what they produced. And then we saw some messaging about them moving back to Hollywood, which was you know, really telegraphing, they're available for business as far as I was concerned. Um, so now desperately trying to own the domain, Sussex.com. Um, Harry coming in and out of the country, obviously for the reasons of his father's illness and then rushing back to present some award or accept some sort of award. There doesn't seem to be a strategy here. They're throwing messages, you know, really suggesting they're available for business. It doesn't really suggest um, that there's a coordinated strategy about them trying to move themselves on. You know, we can all see there's a disengagement with the royal family for all the reasons that be well reported. Clearly, there's a rift, you know, with his brother. So there's nothing harmonious, really, that surrounds the Browns. And people have not enjoyed, you know, the fallout of spare and the desperation to run that negative narrative. Um, and when you've got his father ill, his sister in law ill, um, no real presence in the UK, um, no love for him in the UK, it just feels all a bit desperate. The only reason I can sort of give um, is that obviously Archwell just hasn't connected and it's related to so many things that haven't worked. So you refresh and rebrand, you kick off. And of course, Sussex, that's what they are, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, has all the royal connotations. They're grabbing hold of sort of royal patronage. Um, so it's a reboot to dump the negativity, dump the failure and restart. I don't think the, um, the temperament is particularly, you know, uh, uh, sensible, really. There seems to be a fevered um, sort of dialogue around this and they don't seem to have many friends. They don't have an anchor point in the UK where um, they would, you know, obviously use the sort of royal connections to his true value. So I think that um, you, you look at the sort of global imprint of their brand and yes, there's a lot of uh, fans exist in America. There's probably a lot of young fans that engage uh, with them and actually are empathetic with the sort of narrative they put out. But if you're not locking in to goodwill in the UK with an audience and ultimately with uh, the royal family, doomed or it begins. Why do you think they've lost quite so many? They've lost quite a lot of high-profile staff recently that they've been that have been hired to sort of shape the brand. Um, why do you think they've lost their staff, and what impact will that have on the brand? I'm not sure about what's happened um you know we never know what the real story is so we can only speculate um but they they've always felt that they're in charge of what they do they are the arbiters of their own style i guess and i think that's where things go wrong because they're not bringing in and not allowing people who possibly could help them to have the influence they deserve to sort of put them they feel that they are right they feel that what they is is the is the uh, is is the right uh, course of action future is challenging uh, they have a number of obstacles to to overcome public opinion um establishment re-engagement um and obviously they need a lot of money and uh, there seems to be a, a series of Everett's they have to summit. And um, I, I'm not sure um, if they can achieve that. So I think 
it isn't a particularly rosy future for them because there's been so much emotion connected with their brand, so much failure that's connected with their brands. You know, I thought there was going to be a rapprochement. There was going to be, you know, some um, olive branches, you know, thrown in both directions um, to bring the establishment and, and Harry and Meghan together. I don't see that now. I think that's impossible. I think that um, the self-determination they believe they've got is going to have to carry them through some very difficult times. And I, and I, I think they're hurtling towards becoming a slight cliche. And more importantly, they, they look like the estranged Duke and Duchess of Windsor um, that um, became synonymous with a royal brand that was a soap opera um, that had a negative outcome. I mean, I'm, I'm interested in the fact that you, I mean, their brand originally sort of began with just them telling their poor me stories um, about how awful it was to live in the royal family. But I kind of, everybody's kind of got sick of that idea of like the actual person, their own personal stories. And then once they've told everything about their personal stories, do they have much else to offer? Well, this is the point. Supposedly, we were going to see a foundation. We were going to see, you know, a brand with purpose who were connected to the woes of the world. And and that was a romantic dream. I think we all sort of felt, you know, that this was interesting. Um, it became a lunge for money and it became a lunge for revenge. It became a lunge to create clickbait and all those things that worked against it, which actually goes to my original point. There's no strategy um, about the long-term vision. You, you, you can might win a few headlines today, but what happens tomorrow when people are bored of the story? And you're right, people have heard everything and they want something new. So what do they stand for? What, what were these great aims? Where did they get them? Nowhere. And um, it's all very sad um, because there are some major challenges for the royal family at, at the current time and you could think that uh, Harry who was bred and developed and conditioned for this position uh, no matter what he said would have been such a huge asset for the royal family and that was never to be and I don't think ever will be there... but everything that they have done has always been a bit of a knee jerk it is not being considered so I think you can look at the whole um, uh, you know, from Oprah right the way through, you know, to stuff they've done with James Corden, you know, the books, you know, the stories spinning. It, it's it's just been a catastrophic disaster. And if you wanted to understand how to build, you know, a foundation or a brand, um, there's a good way of doing it, or you can do it the Harry and Meghan way, which is not the most sensible way of moving forward or establishing yourself as thought leaders and a very powerful foundation that might effectively change the world. And then everything changed. There's a hierarchy of the family. You know, there's leaking, but there's also planting of stories.